Hey you guys, welcome to the Danger Zone. It's Ashley. Lots of love and many blessings your way. I was contacted last month by a young lady most all Canadians know. She's a big deal. She wants me to get her truth out there and I feel honored that she chose me of all people to do so. But her story proves every bit of the setup that this has been. And we'll talk about that like I said. Once all my T's are crossed and my eyes are dotted. Okay, let's get on with it. The Soho House is a swanky members only club strictly for the global elite. People like Prince Harry are members. The Mulroneys are members. Megan is a member. And Marcus Anderson, he's the global director. The British royal family and the Moronis have all been friends for decades. The Moronis knew that the British royal family needed to modernize themselves. They needed to show diversity to the people. Leading up to the introduction of Meghan and Harry's relationship, the monarchy's popu popularity was at an all-time low. The majority of the UK felt like they no longer needed the British royal family in that position and wanted them gone. The gist of the article that I found regarding this relationship and the setup goes like this. On Megan's downtime, um, she would go to this, this yoga studio or she would walk her dogs at a park. She's admitted in several articles that she was extremely lonely during her time at, at you know, shooting suits in Toronto. Didn't know many people. Jessica had seen Megan and knew that she was shooting suits. She was a low-grade actress. And so she felt that Meghan fit the bill for what the British royal family needed and that maybe Prince Harry would take interest in her. So uh, Jessica put herself in the way of Meghan at this yoga studio. They met that way and then brought her into Soho House where Prince Harry was a member or is a member. Introduced her to Marcus Anderson and from there you know what happened. Their friendship was a fast one. Marcus, Megan, and Jessica, they started taking many vacations together. Um, when Jessica couldn't go, uh, Megan and Marcus would go travel together. They would go to different fashion events together. They all went shopping together. They started doing everything together. Jessica started talking to Megan about Prince Harry and um, what it would be like to maybe date him. And she knew how to get an introduction with him through Marcus Anderson at the Soho house. So Megan was all for it, even though she was dating somebody else. Jessica spoke with Marcus Anderson about an introduction between Megan and Prince Harry. Of course he agreed, and in 2016, he introduced Megan and Prince Harry to each other at the Invictus Games. She acted as if she had no clue what he did or who he was. It has even since been revealed that in her online diary, she said the best way to get a guy is to act like you don't know who he is or much about him. After a few months of dating, Prince Harry asked Meghan for a break. He told her he just needed a break, and so they took one. She wasn't at all happy about it, but she ended up not being what Prince Harry wanted. She was not his cup of tea after getting to know her. She wasn't going to take no for an answer. She knew that he had certain events and things in the future planned. I guess he had told her about those prior to the break. So she would show up at these events. She would go to pubs over in London. She would fly back and forth. And it's almost like her, Jessica, and Marcus knew that all three of them would benefit from this relationship she would have with Prince Harry. Little did she know they needed her, you know, just as much as she wanted them. She even wrote a postcard and sent it over to Kate trying to get in with her, and it didn't work. Kate didn't like her from the jump. And she showing a desperate attitude made it very easy for them to push Prince Harry onto her, knowing that she would take the bait because they needed her. They needed that diversity. They needed that modernization, and they needed it fast. Their relationship also helped clean up Prince Harry's image since 2005 when he was pictured at a party wearing a Hitler uniform. They knew that she would come into that family, no questions asked, 
She was desperate to be a part of the royal family. And for me personally, I find this disturbing. And it also confirms uh, everything they needed her for. But prior to the wedding months before, they had her go to a fertility clinic just to make super certain before they brought her into the family that her body could produce eggs for them to have a child together. And in that online diary, she wrote, the good news is he's the world's most eligible bachelor. He's a prince. The bad news, he's a ginger. She has no desire for him on a physical level. Just proof that she'll, she'll do anything and put up with everything to be a part of the British royal family. During their break, Jessica and Meghan had devised a plan to mother smother Harry, him growing up without a mom. They felt that would be the best way to get in his head, for her to be a motherly type to Harry. Little does she know, she's the one that got played. She didn't reel him in. She's simply a pawn in their game. That's why whatever Megan wants, Megan gets for the time. Most of the British royal family and their friends dislike Megan, but William can't stand her the most. He's hurt at the fallout he's had with Harry. He feels like they've been at each other's throats more so than ever before in their life. They no longer have the bond they once had, and they blame Megan for it. The reality of it is, though, it's their game. It was the plan they hatched. They went forward with this, so what they need to do is stand in the mirror and blame themselves. Every bit of this is everything they went after. They did this, and so sad it backfired. Be careful what you ask for. You just might get it. You guys, I'll see you real soon and we'll talk fast. Stay safe and be blessed.